but I'm just saying, the general public though, that lady right there, mm -hmm. if you pull this rig right here out, when she pulls out, yep. she's full of fear. She's All terrified. Right. If I pull my van, I'm not afraid of you, but but it, but if I did have fear, like people have fear of cops. Okay. If you pull, if you pull out behind me, I'm thinking to myself, I'm just gonna get some content. I'm just gonna record it. But but that black guy right there, I guarantee you, he's afraid of you. He's scared of you. Do you, do you know that's the reaction that's elicited by the general public? But, so, but you've never <clears throat> gone to the dungeon system? No, no, no. No, no one's no. ever had you turn around naked and look up your backside? No, no. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, in the Marine Corps, when you go in there. And they look up your butt in the Marine Corps? <laughs> oh, yeah. Then you stand in the line, they give you a bunch of shots and stuff like right. that, and, and you stand in line. And that's to break you down to zero, right, and then build you back up, right? right? That's what it's for, right? That's right. That's why they do it, right? Right. Building blocks. Building blocks. <laughs> so they strip you down to nothing, look up your butthole, and then you're at zero. Okay, so I'm just pulling into smaller town America here, and uh, got a cop just sitting over here, and I always just wonder if, like, when they when they park like this, do they do they understand what they actually represent? How you doing? I'm from California, as you can see. Yes, Long way from home. Long way from home. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I just, you know, I left California and I've been traveling across the country, um, kind of just researching the whole country, mm -hmm. you know, because I've done a lot of things in my life, but I'm a real big researcher. Hey. I'm, I'm fanatical about it. But like, um, just follow. and you're a patrol supervisor? I am. Uh, what's, what, what, here, what's your name? Uh, John Burnham. John Burnham. So, so, John, I mean, you, are, we, are we still in Massachusetts or am I in New Hampshire yet? No, you're still in Massachusetts. I'm still in Massachusetts. So, do you realize what you represent? Do, do you realize that what you actually represent? Like Please, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I drive when I drive through here, small town, I'm on the outskirts between Miss, Massachusetts and New Hampshire here, I'm going. But when, when I see you, right, mm -hmm. for me, bro, you know what I mean, to me you're just a, a dude who... You're just a guy who's doing doing this job. Okay. But do you realize how the public sees you at what time is it? One o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock. Uh, one o'clock. One o'clock. So when the when the pub, when the general public sees you sitting over here, right? If you're come in the parking lot of this of this quickie mart here, and you see this cop over here, and he's got a black car with a stripe on it, he's wearing a black uniform cherries and berries on top. I mean, this is one of the state, look at the rims on this thing. It's just beautiful car. Do you know what you represent? I don't know. What do I represent in your opinion? I'm, I'm just real, <laughs> when someone drives, the, the white Jeep right there, that white Jeep. The, I, white Jeep, the white Jeep sees you, he drives through here. When he drives out of the parking lot, what do you think he's thinking? I don't know. If I knew what he was thinking, I wouldn't be sitting here at 1 a.m. <laughs> What, what about what about the the two people in the car with the hood up? What do you think when they see you sitting here? What do you think they think? I you yeah. Really, I mean, I'm, I I want to know what your perception is. What what you think people when they see? You. Man, I'm from California, dude. I mean, come on, I'm across. I, I mean, obviously, I drove my van across the country. I, you know, what I'm saying I'm not being mean to you or anything. I'm just yeah. asking you. What do you when the public sees you in this car with jet black windows, pure black, pure black, pure black? What do you think they think of you? I don't know. You don't know. Nope. You just have no observation. Nope. You couldn't think of anything at all. You don't think. You don't think that they think something about you when they see you sitting over here. You know, do they think that you're going to go over there and help them? If they ask for it, they will. If, why, yeah. why don't you go ask them? I, I just I want to know what you think though because I just read today Fox News. I, I just read this big article tonight. To you know, I, I got a bunch of people that follow my channel and. But I just want to know what you think that the guy in the car right there, he pulled in. What does he think when he sees you at 1 o'clock in the morning? I don't know. You should ask him. He's afraid. He's afraid. Yes, he's afraid of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, and, it's, and it's all across the country. It's not just here. And you're not a bad guy, dude. I, I mean, you and I, I mean, you look like you look like I could play some tennis with. We have a good time. Maybe we go go jump in the water. Perhaps. You know what I'm saying? Go get some lobster. Go get, a, go get a chowder. <laughs> Right? Go get something to eat. Okay. Right? Just we're just a couple of guys. Yeah. I, I just see you, you're just another man. Yes. You're doing this job, but you you're just another man. Because you're I, no better, no worse. Matter of fact, you're supposed to be in service. I would not claim to be better or worse. I'm I'm, I'm just saying though, like you see me as the same, right? I'm just yeah. another dude. I, you can see I drove my van from California. But I'm just saying, the general public though, that lady right there, mm -hmm. 
if you pull this rig right here out when she pulls out, yep. she's full of fear. She's All terrified. Right. If I pull my van, I'm not afraid of you, but but it but if I did have fear, like people have fear of cops. Okay. If you pull, if you pull out behind me, I'm thinking to myself, I'm just gonna get some content. I'm just gonna record it. But but that black guy right there, I guarantee you, he's afraid of you. He's scared of you. Do you do you know that's the reaction that's elicited by the general public? That's your opinion. This. You re is that really how you see it? I mean, because the Fox News article tonight, I read it that the police feel unappreciated and they feel they feel like the communities don't respect them. Okay. Is that how you feel? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's so tight lipped. I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to You're trying to elicit a response. No, I'm trying to ask you truthfully how you actually see the public sees you. There's, I'm not trying to get you in a tr there's no gotcha game here. I'm literally just asking you how I'm telling you the way I think the public sees you most of the time, mm -hmm. but I just wonder what you think they Luke, you look at look at your car. When you put that window up and it's all black. It's not. Right, but when those cherries come on, it's an all black car with black tinted windows. No, it's an yeah. intimidating vehicle, dude. It's intimidating, okay. I, especially because it's, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I just want. I could, I could see that from someone's perspective. Right, right. Yeah. So, in Europe. But then I hope they, to overcome that if they get out and I talk to them and see fair. that, like you said, I'm just a man just, doing just, a job. Just, just a dude doing, doing a job. Not trying to be intimidating. Not trying to be intimidating. I think it's just such a such a blind spot between, and the article said that that they couldn't get new people to sign up to be cops anymore, and you're having a real hard time recruiting across almost every department in America. That is true. That is true. Do you think that has anything to do with the policies and the procedures of all police departments across America? Um, I don't think it necessarily has to do with the policy and procedures of the departments themselves I think that it may have to do with the scrutiny police have been under and you know some people just why why go into a career where you're gonna be faced with that right right yeah yeah you're gonna face I mean you sign up to be a cop you're gonna face massive adversity people are not gonna like you as soon as you put the uniform on so so have you ever been put into the cuffs that you carry have you ever been put in, on those with your hands behind your back have you had them strapped behind your back no. hard no 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 yeah right right you haven't at least that's a fair answer he's, he's he said no he said no that he had not he had not been put in the into the cuffs yeah the the new name on the internet for cuffs is torture cuffs okay that's the new i mean you could hear it everywhere across multiple channels but see you've never been in them Okay. So, so right now, you and I, right, we have two completely different experiences. Correct. So that means that I couldn't, so for example, if you have a child and God forbid, God forbid, if you lost a child, because I've never lost a child, I wouldn't be able to feel what you feel. I wouldn't be able to understand. Correct. It would be impossible. I could never understand, right? I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying like anybody, anybody lost a child and they said to me, man, do you know how I'm feeling? I would go. I, yeah. I, I don't. No. I don't. I've never raised a kid from birth until 12, you know, however, you know, whatever. Tragedy. So then that means because you've never been put in those torture cuffs, that putting somebody in them, even for one second, you don't know how, how bad it hurts. Okay. Is that fair? You said you've never been put in them. Oh, training. Of the training. Yeah, tra I'm talking about like if if, For real? If, yeah, if if I said if I threw you against this car and I smacked those cuffs, on, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like if I did it with how much power I have, right? And I did that to if you. If it was done properly, I don't see why it would have to what, hurt. What's properly though? Properly? Yeah. Like if it, they were put on in uh, a routine, say arrest. A routine arrest. Where there is no, you know, the person isn't resisting. A minimal amount of, you know, some force is required, but. Right. I don't see why they have to be excruciatingly painful. Yeah, I, I, I would under, I would understand how, how, how you would see that. And then, were you, are you told that if you just can get a finger in the cuff, that it's not, it's not torturing the person? Yeah, we, you can usually ask the person. You, you get, if you get a finger in there, then you it's, usually ask the person. You ask them. Yeah. You ask them, and you say, "Hey, does he?" So he, he puts the, he puts the cuffs on, and then he says, "Hey, does that hurt?" And then you can double lock them, and you can also loosen them a little bit, right? Correct. So he can loosen them a little bit. When you get them on, but they are going to have to go in the wrist bone to make sure that you can't pull out of them, right? I mean, they should be pulling out of it if it's done properly. 
They should be what? Forward of the wrist bone. Forward of the wrist bone, if they're done properly. Yeah, you know, they're 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 really they're really they're tough. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I like, don't think they were designed for comfort. If that's what you're getting at. Okay, let's talk about that. They were actually designed to punish slaves. They were designed specifically to torture slaves. As a matter of fact, uh, I've done a full uh, expose on this. The shorter the chain, the more the slave was being punished. Okay. I mean, that, that's what the original. And remember, the Swedes were the ones who built those torture cuffs. And and so like, so but you've never you've never you've never been in them. You've never. I mean, like, I'm not sure if you could tell, but I work out. <laughs> I mean, you work out too, right? Right. So, but if, if I put you in them and I was like angry with you and I was like, you, you bad person, right? <laughs> I put you in the torture cuffs. Then you would, then you and I would have the same knowledge. Then you would, then you would understand why just a random person in a parking lot would, would go, if I see you, then your first step might be because my ears are all mangled. You pull me over and then you go, you go, Hey, let's put you in cuffs right away. As soon as you pull me over, do you ever do that? Why? You never do that. Why? Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that, but I'm just, I'm just, listen, I'm trying to close the, know, yeah, what, trying to close the gap between cops and citizens okay, because there's on. such a gigantic crevice. It's, 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 it's bigger than your car. <laughs> Do you notice I, I kind of I kind of straddle the line, right? I kind of see it. I'm seeing it both ways, right? Mm -hmm. Like you haven't experienced the torture cuffs. You, torture cuffs. Okay. You, you've never been put in them. Yeah. Right. So then, then you wouldn't then you wouldn't understand the conversation about changing those. Okay. You know what I mean? Because you've never been put in them. It's a conversation. If you want to have a conversation about, it, I'll be more than happy to have a conversation with you. Though. Are you off? Are, but you you look like you got a few stripes. He's got some stripes. He got the stripes on this man. He's got some stripes on him. So. So then would you be the guy I talked to about doing a pilot program to change from the cuffs to a Velcro strap that goes around your waist and then around your wrists and bosom the front so I'm not completely, I'm not completely, you know, in incapacitated, you know what okay. I mean? And then, and then we double that up with a camera that goes on your eyes. Okay. So that way that I say, hey, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you come with me. So I can see you with the camera. Never turn it off. If you want to come with me, great. If not, we're going to shackle you and take you. <laughs> You see, you, see, you see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. technology is now here. Yes. We've reached an age where I can interview you from a one o'clock in the morning stop, right? Like, this is amazing. Look, we're broadcasting this man and, and thousands of people will see it. I mean, talking thousands, bro, right? So, so if we have that technology now, then if, for example, I went in there and I shoplifted some Reese's peanut butter cups because I love them. There you go. Right, and then the cop. There's lots, the, of, there's lots of different kinds now. The guy calls the cops on me, and the cops come, and he says, "Hey, look, you know, you got to come with me for booking. If you just said, cameras on, do you want to come, or we're going to tackle you and shackle you? What do you think? My, what do you think I would do? Why would we tackle you and shackle you? Dude, you don't watch YouTube. You don't watch shoplifting the Reese's. I don't know about that. Dude, the guy guy got shot the other day for having the wrong plates on his car. Uh, well, did you see that one? I have not seen that one. It was brutal. It was brutal. I mean, look, you know, I'm past, I'm, I'm past like angry. I'm way past angry. I'm to the point now where it's like, if we're going to be forced to have a single agency that has complete monopoly on power over us, then we have to start to work together to change the, 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 the apparatuses that are used on us from like the 18th century. <laughs> I wouldn't say I have a monopoly of power over no, no, the, the, the state that has a monopoly of power has given it to one autonomous agency <laughs> called policing. And throughout the Seabury Commission of 1929, the Wickersham of 1931, the Knapp of 1972, and then the, the, the Mullen of 1994, all four police commissions say that internal affairs is just the same as just, you know, best friends investigating mm -hmm. best friends. They all say the same thing. You can download them on my website for free. And when you read them, like I've read them, you find out that there's no checks and balances on policing. And so the, today when I read the article from Fox and it was the United Chiefs Association of America, right? And they're like, you know, we're having a problem with officer morale, you know, maybe it's your policies. Perhaps. Maybe, maybe the policies of putting people in torture cuffs uh, upon suspicion using a Terry stop, overturned Terry, right? Then maybe that's the problem. That's, that Maybe that's what made me the way I am. And I'm nice to you now. Dude, I'm, I'm nice to you. Trust me. I have walked up to cops and said things that are not so nice. Be because, but you, I'm past it. You're just a dude. Yes. You're just a dude. He's just a human being. We figured that out.
like ten minutes ago when we started talking. And just so you know, like like I don't I don't hate you as a person. I hate your job. I hate that you chose to do this. I hate everything about it. But that doesn't mean that you. Hate's a strong word. You've been put in the dungeon before. Uh, hate's a strong word. H have you had anybody tell you to turn around, spread your butt cheeks, and look up your butthole? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Have okay. You? Yes. Okay. Twenty times. Twenty times. Twenty. Maybe more. Maybe more. I stopped keeping track at one point in my twenties okay. because I'm a very aggressive person. And so when the cops would be abusing people, I would say, "Hey, dude, leave him the fuck alone." Like you don't have to hit them like that, and then they would arrest me, charge me with disorderly conduct, and then it wouldn't get, it wouldn't stick, of course, because I didn't break the law. So, but like we have to get to a point where we see you. You can't even understand what turn around, squat, cough means. You don't have no idea what that means. Turn around, squat, cough means turn around, squat down, spread your butt cheeks, and we get to look up your butthole, and then you're completely demoralized, and then lift up your ball sack, and now put your fingers in your mouth and spread your cheeks open. How brutal is and that? And that happened off a disorderly arrest. That's happened to me more than 20 times, yeah. That's happened every single time I've been taken to the dungeon. They strip searched me, except for the last time, and I told them I'm not being strip searched anymore. Well, you were done, that, was that done on admission to a detention facility? Oh, it? yeah, I've been, I mean, I've been, so which time are we talking about? Being arrested for jet skiing when I was 23, being arrested for minor consuming when I was 18, shoplifting when I was 19, having a fake ID when I was 20. Every single time I went to the dungeon, I was, forced up against a wall naked where they looked up my butt and, and then made me lift up my testicles and coughed and all those things. Okay. And I've right. never, I, and I've, I've never, say... I've never hurt anybody. Right. I've never, I've never hurt anybody ever. I've never assaulted anybody ever. I've never beat a woman or a child. I've never hurt anybody ever. I've never been arrested for violence, not one time ever. So, 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 but, but you really, you, I mean, like you look at him and he's actually looks like my uncle or someone, a cousin, someone you'd love and care about, but he has no idea what it's like to be put into a dungeon. He has no clue. He's never been. He's never been put in torture cuffs. He has no idea. So we're, we're talking about two different experiences. If I've been to Brazil, I could give you a tour guide. He couldn't give me a tour guide because he's never been through it, but I could tell him all about it. And it makes him physically uncomfortable to hear that I've had to have my butt looked up a dozen times plus. It makes him uncomfortable because he's not a bad person. He's not a bad human being. He's just assigned himself to a Death Star. So, it's sad. You guys just don't understand what you do. You don't understand what you do to society. You don't understand what you do to good people. And that's, you don't understand that you sitting here right now is the terror in the night for most people when they pull in here. They're mostly afraid that you're here. Okay. I'm just, I just, I just, sooner or later we have got to stop screaming. I think and, you might, you should probably maybe ask some of these people. Okay. Oh, nice to meet you. I'll shake your hand. Listen, I got nothing. I got nothing against you personally. I think nothing. what you what you've chosen to do is horrifically bad okay. because you don't understand what you do to people. Like you don't. Well, the, you're you're in the rebellion. I'm in no, the empire. No, you you made me you made me the way I am. I, and what you is did. that? The person you've I hate, never I, met I, before. I I hate cops. Minutes. I hate cops with a passion like you can't even imagine. Um, so I think, you hate me because of my job. I hate you because you would take me to a dungeon right now. You would put me in torture cuffs. You have no idea. Why you, would you, I? What if, what if my license was suspended and you pulled me over? You could take me away. What if what, what if I uh, drove over a yellow line and you pulled me over and you thought I was drinking even though I'm not? You could take me away to a dungeon. There'd be nobody there. You'd be the, you're the only arbitrator. There's no third party and there's no 24-hour vision. So you could arrest me for anything you want, which happened to me all through my 20s, even though I've never hurt anybody. And see, but, but you, th that's what you do. You, you get a call for domestic painting, violence painting, and she says she pushed me. With a very broad brush. If, if, I, if you get a call for domestic and the girl says I pushed her, what happens to me? If she says I pushed her, what happens to me? Uh, yeah. If my girlfriend in the car says he pushed me, what, what happens? I'm not going down the what if. I go to jail. I go to jail, bro. That's what, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to say, though, is I go to jail. And then what you guys say to each other is whatever it takes for you to go home safe at the end of your shift. And then what you don't understand is that when you arrest me for domestic because my girlfriend said that I pushed her, then what happens is, is I have to go through all these horrific procedures that are horrific. But your, but your whole argument right now is based on assumptions. That you don't arrest people? So the, you the, don't arrest so people So you would automatically assume you were getting arrested. Uh, you're oh. automatically assuming on a suspended license you're getting arrested or... Right, I could try to talk my way out of it, but if, if I'm not nice to the cop, he can arrest me under the 2001 case of Atwater versus City of Lago Vista. Okay, yes. Uh, so you could arrest me, though. I could. You could. So you have ultimate power over me if I have huh? any infraction of the law. It's not ultimate power. All, you have complete and utter dominion over me. And if I don't do what you say, you can kill me. 
And, and then by the way, if I in any way or shape or form and say, dude, just leave me the hell alone, then you'll pull your gun out and threaten to kill me. And you may not do that, but I've been, it's happened to me. I've had a gun pointed at me by a cop. Oh gosh, 10 times, 15 times in my life. 20 times? I can't count them all. I can't, one time I went to change tires when I was 20 years old. A guy, a guy in college, I, I, was, I was poor, man. Yep. And the guy gave me a set of tires, so I went over to his house, put the car up. When I came outside, there was an Oregon State trooper. He had a shotgun pointed at me and my three buddies. We were all 19 years old. I, 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 I put us all in torture cuffs in a millisecond. But see, you don't understand because you've never been through it, dude. I, I really am at the point now where I'm no longer faulting you guys. You don't know what you do to people. You take us to a fucking dungeon. It's a, where people get raped. And we joke about it, don't we? We go, hey, don't drop the soap. Ha, ha, ha. Don't drop the soap, brother. But the truth is, it's real. It's real. And I know a guy who I interviewed in L.A. who was gang raped several times in jail. Yeah, it's real. He got, he's HIV positive now. He has AIDS. From being, in, He was arrested for nothing. For nothing burger. So, I mean, I just want you to understand how we really feel. And now what I'll do is I will, just to be fair, so that everybody can actually see it, I'll go over and I'll ask some people privately. I'll say, hey, man, what do you think of the cop hiding over there? I'm not hiding. You're not hiding? No, you're in plain sight. Yeah. So he's in plain sight. He, he, is, he is in plain sight. He's right here. I just want to know what other people think when they see the cop because, okay. you know, and you've been a good sport, and I haven't been too mean, right? I've been pretty nice. No, you haven't been, I haven't, you know. I mean, how far are you from retirement? Oh, I got a little ways. I'm, about, I'm like at the halfway point. So then all I would ask is next time you go to put those torture cuffs on someone, put them in the front and put them on loose and tell them I'm going to put these in the front loose. Just be cool and see if they do it and tell them I got you on camera okay. and see if they do it because we got to get to the place where we start to show some humanity. Have a dialogue? Yeah, 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 really. I'm, I'm no longer just hatred towards you guys. Now I'm like, how the do we change this? It's going bad. It's not just for us, dude. It's for you guys, too, because you've just... I mean, I read the whole... I read that aloud to thousands of people. They feel, you know, the cops feel alienated and, like, the community doesn't respect them and they need, they need praise. They need some praise. Everybody needs a good job. Remember the movie uh, uh, with Will Smith? Hey, give him a good job. Good job. Wilcock. What was it? Woodcock. Uh, Hancock. 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 Yeah, yeah. See, like, we, we have everything in common and nothing in common. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. God bless you, dude. All right, bud. Please be safe. I be hope you. I hope you retire, man, and you have a wonderful retirement. What's your plan now? When you just are demanding change to the point it, it becomes yeah. a kind of a strange thing, it's dangerous yeah, too. It's dangerous. Like, just like your job could be dangerous, right? My job's extraordinarily dangerous. True measure of a man, give him absolute power. You have. You have Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> What's your name, badge number again? Uh, John Burnham. John Burnham from Seven Five. What is it? Seven five. Seven five. Number. John Burnham seven five at Wakefield. the Wakefield. Not a bad human being. Not a bad human being. God forgive me knows not what he does. You know, but you, you, but now you do kind of. You know what I mean? You met someone who's articulate, and, and I'm, I'm pretty intelligent. Like yeah, I, for one in the what time is it now? Oh, I'm, I'm, for I'm. One nineteen. I'm, 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 I'm all. Probably the most articulate conversation I'm gonna have all morning. Well, I don't drink or do drugs, so it makes me kind of. Uh, That's. Great. I'm always just. Ahead just, of the game. Well. I'm on, I'm on a mission to change this. To okay. change, uh, to, that's my whole mission is to change this. My channel's called Delete Laws. You can look at it. Okay, nice to meet you. Good to go. you Take too. care, brother. Hey, I'm, I'm, so, so, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I told the cop I would be fair to him and I would ask him. You're not even on camera. You see the camera's just facing me. What's up? But I wanted to know, when you see a cop in a parking lot at one o'clock in the morning. How did you know he was there? You right. just mentioned it. So now that you see him over there, what do you think when you pull out of the parking lot? Nothing, baby. You're not, you, don't, you don't have any fear of being pulled over? That he's going to follow you and pull you over? I don't care. He's just doing his job. He's just doing his job? Yeah. Okay, fair. fair. His job. I, I told him I'd come over and ask a couple people. Yeah. So that, no, that's he's just how doing you, that's his job. That. I have nothing to worry because I haven't been out drinking. I just got up. I'm going to work. So you think <laughs> if, you get, if you get pulled over that you, you don't have anything to worry about because you haven't done anything wrong? Right. Because you have Exactly. Have you been arrested before? Oh, no. I was in a Marine Corps. Oh, so have you ever been put in torture cuffs? No. Never been put in torture cuffs? <laughs> no, no, no. I was, an uh, M I was an MP in the Marines. Ah, I see, I see. So, yeah. so, so but you've never <clears throat> gone to the dungeon system? No, no, no. No, no one's no. ever had you turn around naked and look up your backside? No. no. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, in the Marine Corps, when you go in there. And the, they look up your butt in the Marine Corps? <laughs> oh, yeah. Then you stand in the line, they give you a bunch of shots and stuff like right. that, and you and stand in line. And that's break you down to zero, right? And then build you back up, right? right? That's what it's for, right? That's right. That's why they do it, right? Right. Building blocks. Building blocks. <laughs> so they strip you down to nothing, look up your butthole, and then you're at zero. Right. Right. You know, right. Got standard you. procedure. Got, yeah, I got you. Got you. Got you. Thank you. <laughs> Take got, care. Have thank a you for your service. Yeah. I appreciate you. you. God yeah. bless you. Hey, hey, man, can I ask you a question? 
So I just wonder, when you see a cop in a parking lot, a cop behind you, does that make you feel more comfortable? Do you feel safer? No. No. How does it make you feel when you see that cop in that parking lot? Harassed. Park? Harassed immediately? Right off the rip. Right off the rip. So Especially me that I'm Hispanic and they don't know me here. Oh, you're Hispanic and they don't know you. So you feel like, what do you feel like? I mean, I don't want to put any words in your mouth. When you see that cop, what do you think is it's the next? It's not only that cop, it's every cop. So I live at, you see, I live at the Everly, this condo right there. Mm -hmm. I work. Okay. I'm retired. I was a cop myself. You were a cop and you're still afraid of the cops. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Say that again. So from my experience as being a police officer, we always, I was a New York cop back in the 80s. I'm actually 55. Oh, you look super young, dude. Thanks. So, um, but now, what, with all this stuff that's going on, because you are—he has brown skin. He is Hispanic. I'm, I'm just, just He's got tattoos on his arms. So, mm -hmm. um, they right off the bat a, a stereotype. Right. Like I, we're not allowed to smoke in my complex, so we have to stand outside and smoke. And I smoke around this time is when this officer passes like two or three times. He don't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? He only does it when I'm out there. And I've done the, 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 the spying on him. Uh-huh. Of course, you have to I, wa I you watch him because... Because of what happened to me. What, what happened to you? Well, I was standing out there one week smoking, and he says, Sir, can I help you? And I was like, No, can I help you? Are you okay? And he goes, Yeah, I'm asking you a question. Are you okay? I said, I live here, sir. And he goes, Oh, you're all set then. I said, I know I'm all set. I, right, I don't, I don't set. need your help. I don't need your help, thank you. Mm -hmm. And he went backwards, turned around, kept driving up and down the street to make sure that I was the person I said I was living there. Ever since then, I just don't trust the police because they right off, they just ask me questions all the time. Question where you're going, what you're doing, who you're doing it with. Yeah, and I'm always by myself. <laughs> well, listen, I appreciate your time. Appreciate your time. Thank you. you God go. bless you. Okay. God bless you. Okay. Thank you for thank your honesty. You. Well, I'm glad somebody's observing. Yeah. Yep. I watch my own channel. Delete laws. My Delete channel. Laws? Delete laws. You'll see yourself on there tomorrow. Laws? Yep, yep. I mean, one, one guy had never been put in torture cuffs. And the other guy was an ex cop and he feared him. And I don't, I, didn't, I don't know if that guy's ever been in jail before, but I wanted to ask him. I wanted to ask him. And so I'm going to try to ask him. But I'm going to ask this redheaded guy here um, if he feels safer because there's a cop sitting over there in the parking lot. But I, I'm just wondering, you know, cops sitting in the parking lot over here behind yeah. us, you know, no one's going to see your face. I just want to know, do you feel safer? Obviously not. Not? Uh, why would I feel safer with a cop in the corner? Uh, what is their job but to harass citizens such as myself when I'm trying to conduct my normal affairs? Yeah, I'm, and, and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a white guy. The other guy was Latino. So I'm just, I'm just getting a fair barometer. So you feel like when, the, when you pull into the parking lot here, um, that uh, how do you feel? I just want to know. Um, when I see the cop, I feel less welcome. I feel threatened. I feel, um, you know, as if ultimately my tax dollars are going to waste. You know, there's a yeah. lot of failures that are being witnessed that, you know, you confront every time you see something like that. I went over and I asked him, do, do you know how the public sees you? Right. And he, he, he's literally oblivious to it. He has no idea that we hate him. Or he doesn't want to get into that discussion because no, I mean, he, he thinks he he's above it or something. You really think he's completely oblivious? No, I don't. Because I don't believe in oblivion. No. In no. that kind of position, like, if you are oblivious, that's a new problem in itself. But I don't believe that people are half as obliv oblivious as they pretend to be. If right. It serves their purpose and it's convenient. I can be a very agitating person myself. I wouldn't imagine that. I mean, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very it nice. It can be a targeted skill, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. I mean, but there's some people will find me abrasive because I just say the truth out loud. Naturally, and I mean. I, I don't hide it. I just say It's it. impossible to have, you know, perfect audience reaction. You wouldn't want that. If you had that, then you'd probably be saying something relatively bland. Right, right. You know, Vanilla, imagine. just yeah. flat or just yeah. plain chocolate. I've always said I'm attracted to characters. So, you know, when it comes to, like, people saying something, even if it is, you know, offending you in that moment, if it's for a certain reason, if you know they have your best interest at heart, you yeah. know, it's yeah. a whole different thing. But yeah, it's totally off track. Related to the cop, you know, that's just unfortunate. We live in a police state. Well, you know, we constantly work seeing it. And ma'am, can I ask you a question? I'm just, just, I'm not, I'm just a video journalist. I'm from California. I'm asking people questions, and I just wanted to just, cause, cause now, ma'am, you're a different demographic than the other people I've talked to before. But there's a cop sitting over here. So can you just be honest with me and tell me, how do you feel when you see the cop over there in the parking lot? Do you feel safer? Where? Over there. Do you, uh, do you feel safer when you see the cops sitting there? 
I really I don't think of it either way, honestly. If he pulled out behind you when you were drove out of the gas station parking lot, would you? I'd wonder why. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if he got behind you, what would you be scared? Um Would you would your no. heart rate a little bit? No. No. Nope. I'm, I'm all legal. Right. I have insurance, registered. So, but you didn't answer the question though. Do you feel safer that the cop is sitting over there? Safer than if he wasn't? Right. No. No. Do you fear, do you think that the cop is more likely to do something to you or do you think a stranger is going to be more likely to do something to you? Uh, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, can you just tell the truth? Yeah. And have you been arrested before? Um, yeah. Been put in torture cuffs? Yep. You went to the dungeon? You went to the gym. And did oh, you yeah. have to strip down naked? Yep. And show your butt? Yep. Spread your cheeks? Yep. Mm -hmm. Who did that to you? The corrections officers. Mm -hmm. So the cops? Uh, I, don't, I don't think they're cops, are they? Well, how'd you go to jail? Well, I got arrested by the cops. So who arrested you? Yes, the police. He arrested you? Yeah. And so, and then he put you in the cuffs and took you to the to the place that you call a jail, I call it a dungeon. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you had to strip down naked? Yeah. Show your butthole? Yeah, mm -hmm. everything. Everything. And, and how long <laughs> were you there for? Uh, three months. Three months? Yeah. Wow. And so now, you see the cop and you don't... You feel nothing? You feel No, because then when I did get arrested, I had did something wrong. Sure, sure, sure. So, but I know I'm good today. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your honesty. All right. I appreciate it. Have a good night. You too. Take care. That's just a small sample. I'll, 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 I'll go back and I'll give him the, the results of that and uh, let him take a look at exactly of how everybody feels. There's one more. There's, there's one more guy. Just do one more person right here. And this is a white guy and we'll see how he feels. Hey, sir, can I ask you a question real quick? I'm from California, you see my license plates? There's a cop right behind you in a, in a truck. Did you notice him when you pulled in? Yeah. Of course you did, right? And so, do you feel safer? Do I feel safer? Do you feel safer that there's a cop in the parking lot? I feel safe anyways. But, but do you feel safer though? Yeah. I mean, the, the cop in the parking lot makes you feel like you're safer? I you, guess. You, do you have any nervousness? I mean, if, you, no. if, if you pulled out of the parking lot and he pulled behind you, how would you feel? I didn't do nothing wrong. Right. It wouldn't bother me none. So have you been arrested before? Yeah. Have you gone to the dungeon? You get, the, the, you get put in the torture cuffs? To jail? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was 18. You're eight? Oh, so. so oh, this is forever ago. Oh, so so we're about to, I'm 47. You're, I'm 60. So, oh, you're, man, you look great, dude. You look great. So so that was 18, but since then you've never been put in the in no. the haven't been put in the torture cuff since then? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you're kind of you're a cop supporter, maybe? Back My father's a retired trooper, so. Your father's a retired trooper? Yeah. Okay. Okay. They don't bother me none. The cops don't bother you none? No. Mm -hmm. Well, you know how to navigate them. You know how they work. Well, they're just doing their job. Just doing their job. That's all. Okay. I mean, some some are good, some are not so good. Yep, yep, yep. The not so good ones kind of ruin things, huh? For the good ones, right? Hey, listen, take the bad with the good. They're everywhere. The, yeah, they are everywhere, but, you know, the, I guess the bad ones ruin it for the good ones. So who, the, are the good ones the ones who are, give you the tickets? Who's the good ones? They're the ones who are understanding and... They ran into the they, elementary school for you, Val? And don't bust your balls. Oh, they don't bust your balls. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah. Some do, some don't. Right. Some do, some don't. Right. Okay. Thank, hey, man, thank you. I appreciate, right. I appreciate your honesty. All right, thank luck. you. Thank you. Don't be comes over, watch out. <laughs> watch out for what? Mm -hmm. Kind of a mixed bag. You kind of got. You, well, I mean, you got one guy is a son of a cop. Okay. And another another guy is MP in the military. Yeah. You're not. You're, you're going to win those two. And then the, the other the other ones were a little more skeptical. You okay. know, a little more nervous. A little more. You know what I'm saying? Which bag? So. It's a mixed bag, but that's what it is right now. Just so you know, it's 52% no longer trust cops and 48% do. I mean, this is the new statistics that just came out five, six days ago. I've been broadcasting them out to the what people. Are the old ones? Uh, more in the favor of liking cops. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it used to be more people supported police than didn't. Okay. And then, and I mean, I think it was COVID. Yeah. I think everybody's sitting at home watching YouTube. Yeah. And you got nothing. You can't leave. Nothing else to do. I think people really watch those cop videos and i think that that was tipped the scale to the like because there's so many people see it you know okay. you know but okay man well listen i appreciate it dude thanks for thanks for being a part of a social experiment this was kind of fun
You take care, okay? Yeah, be safe. You take care, dude. And for the love of God, try to retire early, man. Yeah. Get out of this shit. <laughs> Duck. Duck and cover. Duck, duck out of this, dude. Like the old nuclear test. Dude, you're, I mean, you seem like a nice enough guy. I mean, right. duck. Is, you Imagine know, if we met outside of here. Dude, we play racquetball, go for yeah. a jog. You know what I'm saying? Be regular friends, man. Yeah. Right? If we just got rid of the Could bad be, apples. And if you had an answer on how to better do it. I do. Um, I do. Up. 360 transparency on the goggles yeah. and on the back of the head. Yeah. It, it, just, so, just so you know, what makes people bad is absolute power. It, it, it's not that he's, he's not bad. It's, it's that when you get put in a position of absolute power over another absolute human. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Abs dude, absolute, he said it. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Because it does. We see it in elderly homes. We see it with children who abuse their parents who are elderly that are, become decrepit. They won't do it. They want to smack them, smack them, smack them. And you're like, you're smacking that person in the face over and over. And they don't realize what they're doing because they were given ultimate power over another person. And that's the problem with policing is it's a single agency that has their own policing and their own their own system and it, it just isn't working it's not working if it was working it wouldn't be 52 48 it wouldn't have slowly gone from 90 percent approval i don't know if we're ever at 90. oh no dude you guys i mean just so you know in the 50s when when blacks were finally freed in 1954 uh the approval rating for police was astronomical off the charts brown versus board of education everybody wanted to support the police because the police didn't want to desegregate they would not enforce desegregation and they had to bring in the National Guard. But the cops did not want to enforce. In fact, America didn't desegregate until 1961, 1962. So, little, little stuff, little fun facts in history. Fun facts. I gotta get, thanks, nice talking to you. All right. Okay, take care of yourself, brother. Take care. Okay, guys, so we talked to one, two, three, four people. We talked to one cop. Everybody got to see it. You, you guys got to see it. Uh, I'm not gonna edit any of this. I'm just gonna post it as it is, all right? All right, I gotta get out of here. Love you guys. Just remember one thing, we don't stop. Later, Gator.